special show tonight we have uh, Kelly Debs performing live here uh, here in the pub she'll be coming up here shortly but uh, first uh, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight some of you are first-time listeners and uh, we, we welcome you here to the pub we do broadcast every Friday night and uh, we welcome you to join us again next week if uh, you like what you hear tonight and uh, let's go ahead and get this this show started in earnest I have a uh, very special guest to open up the show I have Kent Kleinman here from Blind Pony uh, good evening Kent Oh, it's, it's awesome to have you here. Um, we're glad you could make it out. I know that, uh, I don't know, it was kind of a, I don't want to say last minute deal that I invited you to come uh, interview here on the, on the pub, but uh, it's good that you were able to make it and we were able to get you here on the show. Um, I know we've been trying to arrange this for a, a number of weeks now, so I'm glad that we got it all together and we got you here. So here we welcome. are. Here we are. Um, so I think I mentioned it, but you're, you're in a band called Blind Pony. Yeah. And, uh, I think you put that together, didn't you? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a labor of love. It's been a lot of work. But uh, this, the show you saw at Rick Rocks was, um, I think that was maybe the best show we've ever played, and the band felt so, so too. It was, uh, I, I was thinking about this earlier when we were, I was thinking about the interview, that, that um, the four guys that we've got now, like the, the, the incarnation of the band that's current, is definitely the best so far. And there's, um, there's an energy and a vibe that uh, I've been wanting for... Yeah, like eight years since two thousand three when we started. Yeah, I, I noticed that you've been you've been at this for a while. Um, I did a little bit of research on uh, on Blind Pony in anticipation of this, and um, it was interesting that I that I saw that you uh, you originally formed the band back in two thousand three. Right. And as I understand it, you're the only remaining original member of yeah. Blind Pony. Yeah, for sure. And it's a uh, it's like it's been like a slow burn to get to where we are now. Because Doug, um, the guitar player, the lead player, has been in the band three years, and um, three years plus, and and um, and Craig, the drummer, has been in over a year. He used to be on bass too, and and Dwayne has been in about a year, and that is definitely the most stable uh, uh, incarnation of the band with the most longevity. Yeah, I uh, when I was doing the research on Blind Pony, I, I found an interview that you had previously done. And uh, apparently you have the, the same problem that Spinal Tap had, and you've gone through like a dozen drummers or something like that. Yeah, right. I, I think I said something in that last interview about short of spontaneous combustion, you know, like many yeah. members of the band have left for many different reasons. And, it, you know, this is L.A., you know what I mean? So, like, what has happened and how the band has kind of, like, forged and become what it is now, it's, it's, it's been an incredible journey. Some nightmarish, some wonderful, you know, but, yeah, it has been... Many people have come and gone, and I, I have been the constant, but I will say now that the sound that we're getting is really due to the, to the four guys that are in it now, and you know, we're really excited about it. Well, as you mentioned, I, I did see you play at Rick Rocks, yeah. um, a tattoo parlor slash art, art gallery. gallery, and that was in uh, was Highland that? Park. Echo Park. Highland yeah. Park. Highland, Highland Park. Park. Yeah. That's right. Um, I, I do know, well, I knew where I was going that night because I ended up there. <laughs> yeah, I was thrilled to see you. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that was that was a really great show, and uh, it was it was really nice to see it. Um, you know, it, it, it's really interesting. I've I've seen I've seen people perform in very interesting places, never in a tattoo parlor yeah, right. before. Yeah, and and it actually was a a really cool venue, I guess you could call it, uh, because they had that second room that they could just, I guess pull all the, the the display stands out of and, and turn it into kind of a, a performance room there. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, really interesting to see you guys performing basically under glass, so to speak. You were you were, uh, you were actually performing right there in the, right up close. In the window, basically. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Very great sound that night. Um, Thank you. 
I, I think I need to apologize, though, because I do believe that I stole some of the band's food that night. <laughs> some of the pizza? Yeah, I, was, some of the pizza? I, I did take some of the pizza. I was, I was in there. And, and it, you it, and the it, guys in the tattoo parlor. It, it, it totally looked like there was so much food there. I'm like, I guess this is for everybody. So <laughs> no, that was I, the band's pizza. I was, I was grabbing a piece of pizza, and I don't remember who it was, but somebody said, yeah, like, that's oh, the that's, band's that's pizza. That's for the band. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. And they're like, oh, it's okay. You can have yeah, it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's funny. It was really good pizza, though, so thanks. By the way, that that is one, I was thinking about this earlier, that that is one of the, in L.A., to get paid in any way, to get anything for your music is a complete boon. So the fact that we actually got a couple of really nice sausage pizzas and some hors d'oeuvres and, like, really some good food, so you were welcome to it. Well, I'll tell you what, Kent. Um, I do this job for food and alcohol, so... Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. And it's enough. You know what I mean? Like, in a case like that, it's good. I'm good with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's... Well, you know what? Before I get into uh, your musical influences, are, are there any other Blind Pony history events that... You, you'd like to share with us any like maybe a moment where oh, where where you thought it wasn't going to happen or a moment where you realized it was or or anything like that yeah m- m- many many such so so one of them i was thinking about this earlier today is uh you know these stories of like the various personnel and kind of like how i came to find them and then kind of like what happened as a result you know like drummers bass players guitar players so uh, one of them was uh, a dude that lived up kind of a little north of Los Feliz Boulevard, and he had a he had a garage where you know he was offering rehearsal space, and he was a drummer. And um, drummers are very hard to find. Drummers and bass players, and you know, competent ones, nice ones, decent ones, all of that. And I remember, I mean, and there's so many stories like this, but this is a choice one. So we go up to the, his, his garage, and when we get there, he comes out in front of the garage, and he says, look, I hope you guys have gone to the John, because you can't go in the house. There's two big Rottweilers up there, and they will bar your entrance. And I was like, wait a minute. So you're telling us that we can't take a fucking piss here, like that we can't do anything, that we're just consigned to staying in the garage? And the answer was yes. And the reason I thought later about it is, oh, he's probably had like a lot of like L.A. Lounge Lizard musicians come through this place. And he's decided that this is the regime. He's not going to allow anything but. So the other thing that went on when we went in there is like, and I have, you know, I have some nice gear, but I don't have like like really super expensive vintage gear, and I would really like to. But he had all kinds of old Fender amps, like beautiful old, you know, Fender Princetons and stuff like that. So stuff I really want, you know, like five grand, you know, uh, at a pop. And so, so I played through a couple of them, and I said, whose amp is this? He said, oh, some guy left that here. It's mine now. You know, that kind of thing. And I was like... So this garage is filled with all this terrific gear. The end of the story is that I was like not too happy with the you know like with the the situation. So I said you know we're probably not going to do this, but could I have my cables back? Because I left some stuff there, and I thought no no it's going to be like everything else there. It's going to go into the boneyard of this guy's you know like like collection of gear. But I did get my cables back. He left them like on the little steps for me, like very honestly. So he was it like kind of a decent guy in the end. But that whole experience of the dogs, you know, do not pass go, do not go up into my, you know, house. It was like this is real L.A. And the other one I was going to say that that pops out at me is this: like in 2004, 2005, I had a guitar player, a, a lead player who was really very competent, you know, really nice guy. But right before one of our kind of like pretty signature gigs he came up to me looked me straight in the eye and he said um ken i've dropped two valium but i don't think i'm going to be able to do the show like i'm too fucking nervous you know like and i'm like you know i mean everybody's nervous you know like before a show like you get tense you know and stuff and i looked at him i said jason you can do it and you're gonna do it and you're gonna be great and he did he actually pulled off the game did a good show you know but it's like there's a million stories like that like playing in la playing with lots of different people but now I look over at the dudes and I'm like, I've got a really g- great group of musicians and they're all up to the task. Yeah, I, 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 I get that feeling. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I thought was interesting is when I was, I was looking up the history of your band. Um, for, the, for the record, we met at a, a birthday party yeah, at Carmen's a karaoke yeah. uh, bar, yeah. actually, is how we met. Yeah, they play some of them. Um, and you're like, hey, I'm in a band. And I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I do internet radio. And, yeah. and it all, it all kind of just it all grew from there. Um, but I was looking up the, the history of blind pony and, and I remember that when we talked that night, <laughs> you were, you were saying that you were in the process of working on your, basically your first tracks for the band. And so most of the time when for I, for this current incarnation. Yeah. yeah. But, but most of the time when, when I'm dealing with somebody that says, you know, we're, you know, we're just now starting to lay down tracks. I think, Oh, okay. So you've been together 
three months, six months, yeah, maybe no. a year. Uh, and I saw that it was since 2003, and and uh, and, and it looks like you you were you were looking for the right lineup to be ready to to really put that together. Yeah, and it's also about production because we. I mean, I've been recording stuff since 2003. You know, me and Kevin, the guy that used to be the kind of other big member of the band we've done a lot of recording but i sort of was very clear about you know that that word release like when are you going to actually release something you know like and we've just got stuff up on cd baby you know it'll be available next week like i was very clear about i want stuff to be really radio worthy and completely ready and me to be completely proud of it and happy with the production and also the instrumentation and arrangements so that's kind of what i meant we knew i've been recording straight along since 2003 but stuff that i was actually ready to release that's what i meant that like we just have a a group of tracks now that are ready to go up and be, you know, kind of public domain stuff, like where everybody's, you know, able to download it and where I actually think it's worth money. You know what I mean? Like this, this is worth your money. It competes with stuff that's already out there. Awesome. Um, so let's, let's kind of move a little bit into the, the music of, of Blind Pony. Yeah. Um, I've, I've listened to a few tracks. I, I, uh, I think it's been three or four tracks now so mm-hmm. far I've listened to. Uh, some of them multiple times over because you've, you've, you've been sharing the different incarnations as you've been yes. working on them with me. And uh, Good word. You know, my, my question for you is who are your musical influences? But I'm going to go ahead and name the first one. <laughs> because cause I think anybody that's listened to your music, and, and I know other people have, have made this comparison, know that uh, Neil Young is a, is a big, heavy, 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 big yeah. influence in your music. Yeah. Um, so, so outside of Neil Young, the obvious choice, so that we don't make this a softball pitch, um, who are your other musical influences? What else brought you to, to Blind Pony the way it sounds today? Well, you know, I want to quote your friend, Lisa, and say something that she said, which I thought was awesome. And it's not about influences, but so much as how the band is being perceived, which, you know, I really want to hear and I really want to know, especially because she was, like, brand new, had never seen this before. I was so great, grateful you brought her I, in. I was, I was really lucky that she was available to come out that night. I yeah. Was, I was planning on just wandering around uh, L.A. that night by myself, and yeah. she ended up being available, so that was yeah, great. Yeah, and, and good person, you know, like a, a good kind of audience member I want, you know what I mean, honest, really appreciative, like attentive and so on. But what she did was when she came up at the end and she was, like, really kind of, like, that kind of like speechless, you know, I really loved it kind of thing. And that's what you really want. And, you know, it's worth all the like, I don't make any money off of this, you know, feeling. But but she said, um, she said, you guys are like, and she was just like, vent, you know what I mean? It was just coming right out of her. She wasn't thinking about it, wasn't premeditated. She said, you guys are like a combination of Tom Petty and Metallica. And I was like, wow, you know, like to, to me. And it wasn't, it's just, so I was thinking about this earlier that, Metallica is not like my favorite band. Tom Petty is top five. You know, I love Tom Petty. But um, I thought, oh, what she's saying is we fucking rock hard. Yeah. You know, because Metallica, I, I, I like Metallica. I don't really like metal that much, but I like Metallica. And I like what those guys do do when they play a show is they're fucking into it. You know what I mean? Like, and they are rocking hard. But the other side of it is Tom Petty. You know, that, that we want, I want this really, like, uh, I think Tom Petty is the most succinct, poetic kind of, like, but but real lyricist that there is, like the the way he puts lyrics together, so that those two things were there. I was like, that's what I want to be putting across. As far as influences, I mean, I was thinking about this also that that influences are different from sort of predilections and favorites and who you really want. And I think influences are almost difficult to describe because they're like literally subconscious. Like what I'm writing, a lot of the time is. I mean, my the main thing is Led Zeppelin and the Beatles, you know, but. It's also Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder and like Jimi Hendrix and Bob Marley and Tom Petty and all of those people in a way are so far in me that I couldn't even necessarily cite them as an influence. I would never say, oh, I wrote that like, although actually I do have one song that's clearly like a ripoff of a Beatles progression, you know, but that's the only time I can literally point to a direct influence. I think the rest of it is like purely subconscious. It's like... And music is the single most important art form to me, so it kind of goes in, and then it comes out through like you know what, th- how you write, what the progressions are musically, what sounds good to you, you know. I, I, I think I think that that you're, you're right about that. Your influences tend to be bits and pieces of the artists that have touched you through your life. So you know you you sit down and you start working on a song, and maybe you find that that you've created a bass line that sounds like this guy, but you're adding a melody that sounds like that band, or you have one breakbeat in the song 
that's the span that you like and 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 maybe it it would take a lot of introspection to realize all those influences that come together to create what is unique to you and i think also songwriting is a very complex thing i think actually and one of the things i think is kind of like detrimental to songwriting is kind of kind of everybody trying to kind of sound like somebody else i think that like when you write a song like when i write a song i'm sitting with an acoustic guitar alone and i'm writing you know sometimes it's a little snatch of a phrase that i have in my head but most of the time it's a musical phrase like a, a little lick or a that kind of starts the process off and then you kind of build up from there so i literally think the more subconscious it is the more you're coming out of like what sound do i like like what is the sound that like that is that and then what should the next sound be like what's the sound the the this chord leads to that chord and it sounds good to me is much more how i write than sort of thinking about specific you know kind of you know this genre or this musical influence you know it's like it just comes out of you when it's right. good i think that whole thing about like um what do they call it unconscious imitation you know like the people have been kind of like sued for you know like in the music business right. like oh you, this sounds just like that it's like it's a, it's a strange concept in a way because I have never written a song with another song in mind. I've written a song because I have something to say or I have a musical thing in my head that has come to me. You know, so writing, and I think w w the point I was actually trying to make is that a song on its own is just a, a melody and a little rhythmic component, you know, played on guitar or some other instrument, and then you have like a little melody in your head, and it grows from there. So like what happens to a song is what you were kind of uh, in delineating you know like then the bass player comes in and he says i would think this would sound cool with that then the drummer comes in and says this is a beat that i think would go you know like and then the guitar player you know in, in our case the you know magisterial doug bland like that that he adds this element to what's already there and i think a good song is one where there's a lot of open space for that to occur and where the band members can all put their you know their stamp on their part. Doug has definitely done that, like, and and, and Craig and, and Dwayne too. So so you, so you you take uh, your your initial construction, then you make it a collaborative effort after you've got what like the kind of the maybe the the verse structure down and some of the lyrics and. You, well, I mean, you're, you're mentioning that you're bringing in the band to help, uh, to that's help really, that's finish really, out the song. It's a so. good question because what we're doing is we're moving more in the direction you just d delineated, right? Like we're moving more towards, okay, so now I really want to completely open it up to Craig. Like what are you going to do? And Craig, by the way, is also a bass player and a guitar player. So when he does a drum part, like he has all that stuff in mind, you know, like and his, like what he lays down for the drums, and he's a, actually an excellent fucking drummer. Like, and he would say probably, oh, that's my third instrument, you know, but I love that because I want to have, rather than like perfection, like kind of, um, you know, technical perfection, I want people who are feeling the song, like what is the song? And, and I think that's gotten lost a lot lately, by the way. I think a really a song should be something very personal and private and like something that's developed internally by, you know, and then it opens up to the rest. Uh, you know, I think that's probably how the Beatles functioned and you know, Nirvana function, you know, like Kurt would bring in his thing and then, you know, Chris Novoselic or, you know, Dave Grohl would say, okay, this is what I think for my, you this, know this what I mean? This is what I think the bass yeah. line should feel like and this is what I think the yeah. bass should Yeah, and that's good collaboration. Yeah. Like, there needs to be an initial idea, a, a, a powerful initial idea that comes, like, from the the deep, you know, and the greatest people are the people that can do that, can access that part of, like, the, you know, like, Kurt Cobain was definitely channeling I don't really like that word, but you know, he was getting something from the deeper layer. Well, there, there was there was something inside of him yeah, that was coming out. Yeah, but, but I, it clearly wasn't fully formed. Um, I don't. I, I think I think that you're touching on a very good point. Yeah, that, that would Nirvana have been Nirvana? No. without Chris. No. and and Dave. No, I don't. And I don't especially think it would without be. Dave. I mean, that's legendary stuff. That yeah. you know, they said that up and they had this other drummer before, um, before for, for Dave came in. And yeah, I think Dave Grohl is the best, since John Bonham, he is the best drummer ever. And it's because he's got this incredible lyrical sense in his drumming. And he fucking hits hard, too. So there's this, and I agree with you 100% that that influence is what makes Nirvana. Like these other guys coming in. But Kurt, Kurt was a fucking genius. Like a lay down, drop dead oh, genius. Agreed. And there's only a few of them in, for the, in, like in the history of art, period, culture, and rock. And Kurt was one. Sock. We apologize for Sock not silencing his phone yet again. I'm the asshole. 
we go through this like every week. Sorry, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I think I think we were ready for the next question. Anyway, um, so so I think we we. You pretty much touched on the music genres that you were into by naming what you got there. So. I want to just say Al Green, Soul, oh, okay. Al Old Green, Soul, yeah. Marvin Gaye, you know, like that whole group. Of, it's like because I don't really like being a white person in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Like I like to identify as like like I am a. You are no longer listening to Otonahuspub.com. <laughs> So we're into, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I wish that I could fucking write something like James Brown. You know, I mean, I wish I could really do it. Zeppelin tried, and it's like, it's pretty good, uh-huh. but only James Brown is James Brown. And, you know, the fucking Jackson 5. Yeah, but but do you want to be James Brown? I don't think so. For a I minute, think, fuck well, yeah. I mean, like, James I, Brown I think and we the Furious wanna, Flames? Oh, my God. Well, I'm not saying that we don't all have our dreams, but but I think at the end of the day, you want to be yourself. No, you, you, you so, yourself. That's right. That's so right. I, so I think you're coming from the right place. That's right. That's right. Um. So I've listened to a few of your tracks, and uh, and we've had some some discussions about them, and I'm just going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that you have a uh, a, a uh, political bent to them, maybe a, a a little bit of a chip on your shoulder that you're that that's you're right. that you're trying to work out through your music. That's right. um, can can you give us an idea what that's about? Well, I, I would say beyond work out, like I literally feel like it's the obligation of the artist to like to talk about what the fuck is going on right now because it's not anywhere else. I mean, CNN is not doing it, MSNBC a little bit, you know what I mean? Like but like if you like if you think about what Fox News is doing right now, like where we are, the corporations having taken over completely, like what happened to Occupy LA, like in LA and all over, you know, those people get beaten up in in Chicago and so on. Pepper sprayed, made. Yeah, yeah, fuck, and beaten up. I mean, people like losing their teeth and getting their fucking brains bashed out for just saying the simple thing that the corporation, the corporate model, because Occupy LA and Occupy. Um, America is all about one little idea, which is that the corporations do not deserve the personhood stamp. You know, like that that corporate corporations are not people. You know, like that is so simple and so basic and so normal. And like the whole thing also about there's these like right wing or left wing extremists and the you know and it's like it's fucking crazy. You know, it's completely crazy. So I think it's incumbent upon every artist to say if I'm going to survive. Like both in terms of like like my own like like intellect and integrity, I have to say something in my art about the current scene. Like, I think it's really fucking bad, and I think it's more important than ever for the artists to do it because I think we're in a situation now where we're really, it's like we're really down a hole. Like, I mean, things are in quotes okay. Like, and it's not like the '60s, you know, like where everybody's going off to Vietnam and so on. But like. I teach, but, by but, the way, and I got a lot of dudes that come in. They they were like in Iraq, and they have like PTSD, and they're all fucked up, you know. And like that's not being, you know what I mean? Like it's it's happening now too, but it's not overt. Like the general population at large doesn't know about like what's really going on. And I think I'm not I'm not so like I'm not saying. What were you gonna say? Oh, I, I was actually gonna say that that I I feel like we're maybe we are in the '60s again. In a certain right. s- certain aspect, I, I think the difference between now and the '60s is that the '60s was more about the the people saying, you know what, the the truth has been obscured from us by media and by uh, the the people in in power for so long. We're going to go ahead and tell the truth. While the difference today is is that the truth gets out there, but because we have a 24 hour media cycle that 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 follows news and, and events, you can't get traction. You can, you can you can bring up a concept. Agreed. You can say, you know, here's a problem we've discussed, and unless it unless it morphs and it and it grows and it becomes something fresh within like six hours, it falls out of Agreed. that news cycle because something else has to come in. Because we have how many now channels that that have 24 hour news that have to keep coming up Agreed. with something new to get people to watch. Agreed. And I think that it's actually a brilliant like kind of new idea, which, you know, I hope you'll, you know, continue kind of that that vein in your own, you know, like with what O'Donoghue's Pubs does and, you know, what you're doing on your own. And I think, by the way, there's a whole lot of things like that that need to be articulated, like every in every area of cultural life. Now, everybody is being overwhelmed by information that's not potentially valid or where we can do like in the 60s is exactly traction is a great word like you know you say the vietnam war or you know and that stuff really like captured the imagination of a whole group of people to the degree where everybody's willing to say we're going to go out we're going to protest it and it had an influence i mean eventually the war stopped you know like and we could say some of that's happening now you know what i mean like theoretically but but, but in those days it was the five o'clock news they only had an hour to fill 
now they've got 23 more hours to fill during the day. They and can't tell the same story 24 times That's a day. right, and it is information overload, so we're all in this position of like having to somehow like cull the important information from the unimportant, the things that we really care about. Like I watch like like 11, 11.30 at night, I watch whatever the hell is on Channel 3, this like sort of Democracy Now! station, you know, and I'm like... You, you oh. must have cable. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's where the real stories are being told? Like, and I listen to this stuff, and I'm just fucking appalled, you know, like at what's going on over in the Middle East, like what's going on in the U.S. Like, the stuff that's going on is really bad, and yet it's completely under the radar because it's not being carried by that mainstream media. And I think... Well, I think the difference is, is that the mainstream media picks up on it, but it, it lasts so briefly in the news cycle. Um, you mentioned that CNN was um, I hate kind CNN. of kind of falling away from news, and, and I've come to that same conclusion myself recently. Um, I I actually did a little bit of uh, of of journalism back in in like high school. So don't you're don't doing think it now. don't don't think that I'm like you know a, a big guy about journalism. But but I understand the basic tenets of an article. And I can't tell you how many times on CNN I get to the end of an article and I go, where are your sources? Yeah. Where is your facts? Yeah. Where where are the things that make this a story yeah. and not a, a fabrication or a or just a a, a dialogue, I guess? I, I, I'm not sure how to put it. But, but, you know, you get to the end and you say, okay, so you quote a study, but you don't tell us what the study is. Yeah. How do I find the study? How yeah. do I go back to that study and yeah. see that, in fact, that's what's in the study or if it's if it's your interpretation of what that was. Yeah. Or. And I think that's also like the kind of, kind of like the whole informational glut and the fact that like, that you, where are you going to get your information from? You're going to get it from Wikipedia, right? Which is like a completely not authoritative source. <laughs> and so you're going to say, and then that everybody that's, that's where I get like 90% me of my too, data Me too, me too. Fuck, and, I mean, there's no other and, way. And a know? lot of times it's accurate, but it depends on what you're looking at. When, right. you, when you get into the political realm, it yeah, gets how a little definitive risky. is it, yeah. and how how real is it, and how you know, like, what's to be trusted? You know, like, what source can really be trusted? Well, and, and it's following the sources, right? And let's face it, also, we're all overloaded time wise. You know, so like, how much time? What issue can I really focus myself on? But I do want to say this about the kind of corporate influence over media, and also over the arts and over music, right? Because what's happened essentially, in music is the same. Well, it's not the same, but it's kind of like the overload of like. Um, well, there's two problems, right, like for musicians. One is is that all of the mainstream music, you know, K, 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 you know, KROQ, KLOS, you know, like the big stations, which have corporate sponsors, you know, funding and so on, like all they do is play the same shit over and over and over and over yeah. again and no mu- new music station. When I moved to L.A. in 2000, 2001, there was a station, I think it was like the same bandwidth now that um, 100.3, the sound is on, which I kind of like. It's Actually, all right. I do, I do dig the sound. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's better than the others, you know, like, but it's still, you know, like if you think about, well, when have they played any new music, like anybody like a, a new, an upcoming artist? Never. Right. So no the, one does that. Right. Really. No one does that. But this station in 2001 did do that. And it would play like really deep cuts from other... I, I know Nicole what Sandler. I know do you what you're remember talking this? about. Yes, and I can't remember the name of that station. I but called her up. I yeah. mean, I emailed her at one point. I tried to call her, and then I fucking emailed her. Like, what happened? She was they were, in they Florida. They were truly an independent rock station. And they yeah. played all this cool shit where you were like, this is what, when I was a kid, this is how I learned about music, by listening to the radio. Like, this is where new stuff comes up. And this is why O'Donoghue's Pub is so incredibly crucial and all like internet stuff because my music like you know which is as good as stuff on the radio is getting played so that somebody theoretically can hear it and say oh i want that i want to know about that music as opposed to like we, we joke about this in the band a lot like especially me and doug like about how there's like only you know like uh klos is two for tuesday you know and it's always the same two songs like when they play zeppelin which or, is or it's the same band it's the, the same bands it's yeah, the same you, bands you know for you're sure. gonna get zeppelin you know you're gonna get floyd yeah you know you're gonna get uh the stones you you know which bands are gonna be in that rotation but even yeah. check it out even zeppelin because i don't know you, you, you're into like it's like called whole lot of lead or something like that <laughs> at, at seven o'clock on tuesday and i was a devotee of this like five years ago six years ago and they would play all these cool like stuff from like you know like um, you know like concerts from whenever and so on like and it was like 25 minutes long and it pretty much went straight through hardly any commer- now it's like they make this huge advertisement before they start you know like about the show and they talk 
literally like and it, and the, the the talking part the advertisement part has extended and the music has contracted to the point where and all you get is the same 12 songs you know ramble on whole lot of love you know like all the super famous ones and it was like this thing used to be good and you don't get cashmere because it's too long no you don't get cashmere and you don't get any i mean cashmere even is like i mean i'm talking about because cashmere is what like seven and a half minutes long that's that's too long for radio no. now and so, and it's only 18 minutes now or whatever it is. It's like yeah. everything. And I want to just say this quickly that everything, I feel like the corporations have like cut back on us and our enjoyment of like life on some level, like a little bit at a time in all kinds of ways that is really like, that's one of my like obvious examples. They took it off the air for a while, right? And then when they put it back on, it was shorter. They took the DJ, Gary Moore, who was the guy that was doing it. They took him off for a while and put other people on. I mean, what the reason for this is must come down to one thing, money. Well, it, terrestrial radio is all about money. Yeah. It always has yeah. been. Um, so, you, so you kind of, in your, in, your, in your long answer there, which was awesome, by the way. Thank you. Um, you, you, you touched on where we want to go next in this. Um, you, you mentioned that, uh, that we play songs like... Blind Oil Pony. For free. Yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. Yeah. Now you just stepped on my line, by the way. <laughs> uh, so so we, we do have Oil for Free here queued up to play. Cool. Um, give us a real quick, because we're, we're running a little long now. Um, give us a real quick uh, introduction about this song, wh- where it came from, what it's about, what it means to you. Okay, so Oil Free, which means a great deal to me, is one of the, you know, because I don't like sit down to write a protest song, you know what I mean? It's just like I get mad, and then I like about something, and then I'm like, so this song was kind of like inspired by this bumper sticker I saw. Why is our oil under their sand? And it made me start to think at length about fucking the whole Middle East. And like, wow, that is so ironic and so to the point. The fact that America thinks that we own somehow all of this land that is not ours. You know, like, and so well, it, we don't want the land. We just want the oil. We just it. want the oil underneath. Right. But why is our oil under their sand? So I started writing this song and I decided I'm going to make it kind of like really repetitive, like the lyric. I'm not going to try to go into a lot of the kind of and I'm going to try to also leave it kind of elliptical and elusive, you know, A-L-L-U-S-I-V-E, like to try to get the, 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 the listener and me too, right, to kind of think about it in as many ways as possible, like not kind of pigeonhole what the, the message is. But I wanted also to be strong about the fact that what I'm saying is this, this has led to blood for oil, death, you know, lots of death and lots of like real tragedy. And I felt it like when I was writing the song. All right. Well, uh, Sokka, let's go ahead and, and play oil for free and let the listeners at home uh, see what they get from it. <laughs>
All right, you are listening to O'Donohue'sPub.com. This is your host, DJ Rubik, and uh, we are having a, a live in-studio interview here with Kent Kleinman of Blind Pony. In case somehow you just tuned in right now and had no idea what was going on. Yes, Sock, you, everything good? All right. <laughs> he just comes over and looks at us like, <laughs> like what are you doing? Yeah. I don't know. Um, so, uh, so you just listened to Oil for Free, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's the track that you've given me what are you doing over there, Sock? Yeah, turn that, there we go. Thanks. Um, that's the track you've given me three, four different iterations of. Yeah. Um, you're clearly working on that. You're trying to get it honed. Yeah, it's done. Um, is it done now? It's done. Is, is this disc the, this the, is the, it. the final one? What you just heard that. You're it. not getting that disc back. No, not unless Rick Rubin <laughs> comes in and says, "I want to, I want to reproduce." <laughs> <laughs> reproduce. Or Bruce Dickinson <laughs> suddenly wants to come be your producer. Yeah, you get more cowbell. Um, so let's so let's switch it up a little bit, Clint. We've we've talked about your political influences. We've talked about your musical influences. We've talked about Blind Pony. Um, what what makes up Kent Kleinman the man? Um, I believe you're from New York City. Is that correct? Oh yeah, fucking a. So so uh, so ha- being a man from New York City, or, or probably a young boy from New York City, That's right. Born what and raised. And we got to keep this this quick because we're running a little over. Um, yeah, yeah, what what brought you from the the young boy in New York City to the man that is sitting in O'Donohue's pub here in Sherman Oaks, California yeah, right. today? Sherman Oaks. So uh, thirty I, seconds. <laughs> I was I was on Broadway. And we got a Tony Award for Death of a Salesman in two thousand. Brian Dennehy um, was Willie Loman. We did the show. Arthur Miller came and brought us all from Chicago to New York. I did four hundred thirty three shows in a row. And the show came out to the Amundsen. So I moved. And part of why I moved was I figured out, hey, if you want to make it in entertainment and have any kind of clout, you got to get a name. And L.A. is a place that's um, it is, it's, it's a, it's a super complicated place for both the music and the acting business. And what I decided was I'm going to keep doing the acting stuff, but I'm going to do something like purely creative for me. And I've been playing guitar since I was nine. So I was like, now I'm going to start doing the music stuff. I'm going to start to write and compose and put a band together and like really do it. And and so it's been. I, I think music has kept me in L.A. Like the 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 cinema bar, like the place that we play kind of regularly. Like, and and even that place, Rick Rock's, you know, tattoo parlor that you that you you know, it's like that's what you know. I I I, I just want to I want to make this abundantly clear because I think our listeners at home might not get my my true impression of rick rocks because you know it's it's hard to say yeah i saw this band at a tattoo parlor and it rocked you know people are gonna go what they're playing a tattoo parlor yeah. but it really was a cool intimate show Highland Park. um you know one of the things that i love about dealing with independent artists is that i tend to see them in very interesting venues where you know if you if i wanted to i could have taken like three steps forward and like touched you and there's no security to stop me. You know, it's that's that right. intimate. That's right. Um, and it's, and it's really awesome. And, and I like the fact that, that we can be on that level that, that we we're all in the room for the same reason. And we just kind of all feel like we belong compared to you go to the whiskey or you go oh, to, fuck. or you go to uh, the strip the, 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 anywhere on the strip really. Oh, man. And they're up on a stage and you can't get to them and they can't get to you. And you'll be lucky if you can find them after the show. And yeah, that just doesn't, you know, and, and I don't know if you've, if you've been dealing with any of those clubs lately, they have I started don't do to it. suck really I don't bad. do it. But, um, but yeah, I love these little intimate things that, that, you know, when, when, like when you took your break at Rick rocks, uh, you know, I got to come up and talk to you and to your bandmates and, and, and get a feel for everything. Lisa got to come up and talk about how great that you guys, she felt you guys were and got your, your CD. And, you know, that's... She was that's, awesome. That's, Thank you, Lisa. That's just that's just awesome to have that level of, of connectedness with what's going on, um, which um, told us, took us like way off course about where we talk. Out. No, but Rick Rocks. That was like that was a really that was a terrific show, and you're you're totally right that like that connection. By the way, I I think I heard McCartney saying something recently, or, or, or I don't even know when it was, but something about how he wanted to start going to play little clubs again, like that 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 they had made their reputation at the Cavern in London, you know, like or no in um, 
in the where are they from Liverpool, right? right. This little place down, the, the like, four boys from Liverpool. Yeah, yes. the four boys from Liverpool, and that the, the, what they the way they kind of made their name was playing these shows in this basically this kind of like old cave, you know, like which is what that cavern place is like. If you've seen photos of it, you know, and that people were just as you described, right on top of them. And that, that there's something about that. I mean, the, the downside is it's really fucking nerve-wracking. You know, like my, one of my stories about the, about the guitar player that couldn't do it, you know, without Valium, you know, like before the show. It was like completely, he's so fucking nervous because the people are right there. You know, like they see every note you play, hear every note you sing. And it's like, but that's what music is about. And I think that it's kind of sad in a way. I mean, like that it's become, you know, stadium rock has become this kind of like, I saw Prince and I don't even like like Prince, but like I saw Prince l- last year at that those shows at the Forum that he did, and we were really close. Like my friend got really great seats. My friend Danny, and I was like, Prince chose to do like twenty shows and twenty nights or whatever the hell it was for twenty bucks, so he could have that feeling again a little bit. Even though the Forum is like a big venue, but it's not a stadium, you know. Like, and there were like ten thousand people there, not like fifty thousand, you know. Like to have that feeling of like I'm connecting with the audience, like we're. And so that was what was happening at Rick Rocks. Like, you were there, and I knew it, you know, and I was like, Mark's fucking here, you know, like... Hey, it was such an intimate venue that I could just walk up and eat the band's food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't remember who it was, but but if if you could figure out who it was that that ultimately granted me permission to have the pizza, I I really want to Probably the the lovely Terry Hall, and I hope she's listening, because uh, Terry was, uh, 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 you know, put that thing together. And, like, at first I was like, no way, I'm not doing this. And, like, you know, but talking to her, I was like, no, this is going to be really good. And it was, and it was. And that thing about you eating the pizza, too, is just like, it's like, that's that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? People come out to the show, and there's there's some pizza for them. You know what I mean? Like, thank you for being there. Yeah. Um, so you're a, a self-proclaimed rock history buff. Um, and, and I'm going to have to hold you to this. I wish I had a timer, but I, I'm sure, pretty sure I can keep this. But um, give us a 30 second history of rock and roll. OK. I and c- go. I can't do it in 30 seconds, but I'm going to say this buff and I'm, I'm not. But rock and roll begins with Chuck Berry and th- those dudes. And. Uh, it goes through the Beatles. John Lennon gets shot in 1980. Rock dies. Like, it becomes the strip. It becomes all this crazy fucking hairband shit. Kurt Cobain comes in, starts it all over again, and says, we're going to really actually put, you know, lay down some real shit, you know, like rock and roll that really gets to your heart and really makes you move and thumps through your body. He dies. And by the way, I'm still, I still don't know. I've seen the movie. Like, I've thought about it a lot. I still don't know what happened to Kurt, really. Was he killed? You know, like... Because I think John Lennon gets killed and Kurt Cobain gets killed because they are, in a sense, they're making something move in people that hasn't moved for a while. I, I have a theory about Kurt Cobain. Please, um, it, it might it might uh, it might drive off some listeners, but but here's my theory about Kurt Cobain. My theory about Kurt Cobain is that he he, he was a self admitted um, heroin addict, um, primarily because of a, a stomach ailment. That, that he was that he had. I've he heard was, that too. Penny pain. Royalty that, exp- that, that, talks to that. Yeah, that 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 I'm starting to read now. People think that it was because um, I guess just uh, shortly before he he died, he was diagnosed with scoliosis. Wow. And they think what it was was it was a pinched nerve. Wow. That caused that pain. Fuck. And here's the irony of it. Kurt Cobain was ambidextrous. He chose really? to play left-handed. Wow, that's fucking because he, crazy. Because he just wanted to be different. The way his scoliosis was, if he had been playing right-handed, oh, that's it never crazy, would have happened. Crazy, dude! That's fucking crazy. So, so here's my theory. This is this is where I go from from science fact to almost certainly science fiction. Um, <laughs> my my theory is is that he came down off of heroin and realized I married who? <laughs> fucking Courtney and Love. And shot himself. <laughs> See, I, I actually, I have like a little thing. Kurt was giving a lot of money to left-wing causes. I mean, I, I've heard like a lot of fucking money. And Kurt was like a very, very super intelligent dude. He knew what was going on in this country. So I always have this thing. Like there's this book, by the way, about John Lennon's, you know, quote unquote, potential murder. That it wasn't actually this guy acting alone. That there was like a, you know, and I read this book. in Mark the, David it, Chapman, right? Yeah. And yeah. it was that, that, that the CIA had pumped him full of LSD and con- continually suggested to him to go. And you can kind of go poo-poo it and go, oh, no, no. But I actually read a book about it in the in and i think this stuff is being kept from us just like about jfk like a lot of the stuff that has happened is like not being told because these dudes really were changing the way we think and feel and like changing the way i mean 
Kurt Cobain, like what Kurt Cobain and what John Lennon did is like, oh, and I want to say this, that a, a friend of mine, I told him, I said, I think rock died when John Lennon died. And he was like, no, no, no. And then there's this exhibit right now, and it says the death of rock and roll or something. It's like in L.A. No, right it's, now. It's, it's who shot rock who and roll. Who shot rock and roll. And, and what's funny is, is uh, it's, it's actually a brilliant play because um, the, 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 um, the exhibit is about the photographer's that took pictures oh, of rockers. I get it. So who shot rock yeah, and roll? Yeah, I get it. Um, I know. I've, I've seen but those. But it's in Lennon's fact, photo. In so fact, what I today, was, subconscious. I was driving down Ventura, and that's the other thing, too, is that they're showing you pictures of dead rockers. Wow. As you go, you know, as as you see all these different wow. these different banners, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's about the photographers that took pictures of all the rockers through the years. Wow. They're just they're cherry picking the ones that that died prematurely. But John Lennon and Cobain are these two figures. Cheryl Crow's has a line: "Jesus, John Lennon, and Cobain." You know, somebody met him personally or whatever. And I thought about that, and I've thought about it a lot, that those two dudes are the smartest, most kind of like, and you know, and there's a lot of other people, too, that died, like like Jimi Hendrix, you know, people that, like, really had something they were really on to. Here's what the country's about. Here's what we're going to write. Here's what we're going to perform. Here's how we're going to perform. And this stuff is going to change things, you know, and then, then they're taken out. And you can say, okay, well, Kurt really did, or Courtney did, or I don't know. I... I think your I think your thoughts about Lennon carry a little more weight than your thoughts about Cobain. Um, I, I can I and I think it just had to do with timing. It has to do with a lot of different factors. Um, I remember the day that Kurt Cobain died. Me too. Um, I was I was actually managing a comic book store, and I had the radio on, and it came over the radio that that his body had been found up in Seattle, and uh, and I was I I just didn't know what to do. Um, I, I actually had a, and you got to realize for the, for the time frame when this happened, this is sort of a big deal. I actually had a CD player yeah. <laughs> in the comic book the store. The nineties, man. I know. It, even then, like you didn't always have a CD player around. Um, I actually had a CD player there in the store and I had, um, some, Never mind. so I had, so I had, I had probably all my Nirvana, um, with me and all I did for the rest of the day was just play Yeah, fuck Nirvana. yeah, dude. Um, and, and, and I, and I feel, I feel a little. I don't want to say ashamed, but maybe embarrassed to a certain extent uh, of all the people that came in that day because I think they all could tell that that I had actually gotten teary eyed. Why? Over Why would ex- you fucking experience. be embarrassed? It's a t- tremendous tragedy, a tremendous loss. Because uh, I'm a, I'm a man, Kent. <laughs> let me men, tell you, men, little, men me, don't me, cry me, in public. Let me tell you a little story. So I hung out with this dude from Peru for a while. And, like, I was into Nirvana already, but this dude knew every song fucking lick for lick. Like, he could play all of Nirvana practically on an acoustic guitar, like, on his own and sing the fucking lyrics. This guy was, like, from fucking Peru, you know? And he was, like... And we we talked about this because it was shortly after Cobain died. And we talked about this. I was like, this guy was a world figure for, for, for music, for culture, for, like, you know, and representative. And, by the way, you know, Pearl Jam says something really interesting. I was talking about this earlier with Adrian that that... that that if it weren't for Kurt Cobain, Pearl Jam would not be Pearl Jam. That 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 as Stone Gossard said that that Kurt Cobain said, "Our we just sucked. We just weren't good enough." You know, like or something like that. You know, like, and he said, and uh, so the standard, and I think this is true of John Lennon also. These guys are the standard bearer for music and for politics, like for for saying, you know, because John Lennon is saying, you know, I'm going to put myself in a bag, you know, for peace. You know, I'm going. Kurt Cobain was, like I said, I think underground. But giving a lot of dough to left wing causes, you know, and like really saying, I know, who, you know, where my bread is buttered. I know what's important, and I'm going to stand up for this stuff. And it's like, anyway, I, 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 I'm not totally disagreeing with you, but my view is different. I think that these people were, there were people after them. I'll put it that way. Well, also, um, when when Kurt Cobain died, I was still kind of a, a doe eyed kid right out of high school, so. Um, you know, I, I didn't have the uh, the subsequent twenty years, or I guess it's to 19, evaluate. nineteen. Is it what? It, nineteen years now? Oh, it's or, just I don't um, even want to. Think you know, about to, to, it. to have gotten as uh, as jaded as I am. But today, Rock but. has died since Kurt left. I don't. I don't know that I would say that. Um, I think. I think Rock has been morphing throughout the years, and and maybe we're. I think we may be on the verge of something new. Coming. I hope so. Um, 
but I don't know that I don't I don't think Rock ever died. I don't think I don't think at any point did Rock die. I think Rock has gone through different changes that that sometimes were necessary to get it to the next level, but weren't necessarily the uh, the the epitome of what Rock could be. Could I put it to you this way that we're recovering now? Like there's some bands coming around, like you know, and like you know, and these aren't like new bands, but like the White Stripes and the Black Keys and bands like that are really fucking laying it down. It's really yeah. good. But who's gonna put? that level of intelligence and passion into lyrics and just sort of thinking about the world and life, you know, that... Anyway, I mean, Nirvana was a, an amazing moment. And I think it's also about... They were independents, like fucking Sub Pop is the people that produced those guys. It wasn't coming from... You know, I think I remember seeing on, like, VH1 or something that... Well, well Geffen eventually picked him up. Yeah, but, right, Geffen picked but, him but up. That was, but you have to realize, that was, that was when, um, when uh, DGC was first really coming onto the scene. And Dave Geffen's idea was... To, to find great artists and let them just grow under his umbrella. Dude, you just said it, because that's what's not happening now. People are not looking for, like, who's the next person that really has to, something to say? They're looking for, like, where can we make some fucking dough? You know, well, like... You know, you know, my thoughts on... That's always on, been happened. Well, you see, my thoughts are that we are, we are, we are in a, uh, a transitional period in music when it comes to production, distribution, recording, all of that. Um... Case in point, I spend my days going out to clubs, bars, yes, you do. Um, various different shows, uh, tattoo parlors, uh, and, and, and meeting independent artists. And, 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 and for the people listening at home, um, you can figure out a quick scam based on what I'm going to tell you right now. But I wouldn't recommend doing it because you're going to ruin my play. But, um, but basically what I do is I go to these shows. And I listen to them. I, I I take in what they're about. I I judge the value of their music, and and for the most part, I'm I'm a pretty easy guy to please. Um, but on the same token, I can you know if you if you want me to tell you what I think is wrong with your music, I'll tell you you know. Uh, but but a lot of times at the end of these shows, I go up to the artists that 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 I feel a connection with, and and I hand them a card and I say, you know what, my name's uh, well, I'm DJ Rubik. Right now. <laughs> when I'm there, I use a, a different moniker perhaps the one that's on my driver's license. Um, but, but I introduce myself, I hand him the card and I say, Hey, you know, I, I do an internet radio show. I like your tracks. I'd love to, to play them. And 99% of the time they turn around and they hand me a CD and they say, here you go. I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, for you to play that. And, and I just, I, I love the fact that they have that CD, you know, um, for that's those of you, for, you know, not, not everybody that's listening tonight, um, is is old enough to realize that there was a time that you could not record your own CD. Yeah. You could not record your own album. Yeah. You had to go through the gatekeepers, which were yeah. the record companies, if you had any hope of actually having an album yeah. that, that was ever produced. Yeah. But in today's world, you buy the right computer software and you get the right equipment, you're recording yourself. You, you've got your own disc. And... And I think that's changing music in a very fundamental way. And, and for I the feel, good. I th oh, it's definitely for the best. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist Julia Nunes. Um, she's not a rocker, per se. She, uh, she, she did a, uh, a series of YouTube videos where literally all she did was sit in front of her computer with a webcam and a microphone and she recorded all the parts to the song, all the tracks, and then mixed them up and created a YouTube video. And and in the beginning, she was doing covers of different songs. She'd do Ben Folds. She would do Michael Jackson. She was doing all these different cover songs. But what she was doing is she was doing them on like a ukulele and a recorder and a harmonica. And she was doing all the tracks herself, cool. mixing them together, and then putting them on YouTube. Cool. She recently, um, about six 12 months ago did a kickstarter project she was looking for i think it was fourteen thousand dollars within 72 hours she, she had, had twenty eight thousand wow, dollars and when she was done she had over eighty thousand dollars wow she's produced her own album she's got her own everything she needs she's made more money by herself than any artist has ever made i think wow off their debut album going through a record company and I see that this is an opportunity and I don't know that everybody's ready to, to jump into that I mean she had a very unique 
concept that, that brought in a lot of backers. But the fact that she could do it herself really speaks volumes about where the music industry is heading. And I think you're going to see more and more artists that that are doing it themselves. And then the record companies are going to have to realize that their job isn't so much to be a gatekeeper anymore. They actually have to go out there and provide value to these artists so the artists choose them instead of them choosing the artists. You know, there's a story about, like, one of my favorite bands is Wilco. And there's a story about them and how this kind of it's just kind of like identical and and, and that I think they were turned down by Warner Brothers you know and then that they and somebody kind of kind of reevaluated the in my mind the way it actually all occurred but you know do you know Wilco Are you a fan of Wilco I, I'm familiar with Wilco they're 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 out in Yankee Hotel Foxtrot which I think is absolute fucking genius and you know whatever you say about you know Jeff Tweedy and so on it's like. There's a there's a content in that album that cannot be denied, you know, and it's like it's just it's just terrific writing and terrific like production. And they did that kind of like what you're talking about. I mean, in a much less like absolutely like, you know, in other words, they somehow they put the album together and then like eventually a big label came and picked it up, you know, like they had been turned down and they and I think that is the the road. I think the co- complexity and I'd like to know more about this 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 woman you're talking about. I think the complexity now is is that you still need distribution and you still need like somebody to you know kind of like promote your concerts and stuff you know like really get you out there to make a living at it. It sounds like this chick is doing it you know which is fucking by awesome herself. by herself and it's just it's incredible and I think that that's what this is what O'Donoghue's Pub is about. It's about trying to say I want to get to that next level where it's not just you know me like doing music because I love it, but me being compensated for it. You know like me being able to actually make a living off of it. But what you're saying and I'm hearing you and I'm listening. It's changing my mind about. Some things is do it yourself, man. You know, like do it yourself and trust that the the audience will be there. Well, Kent, um, I got to tell you, we have run like ridiculously over here, <laughs> and and we still have Kelly Debs to perform later tonight. And I think we also need to take a break and, and eat some dinner. So, um, real quick, and I, I'm going to give you like 15 seconds. <laughs> Um, tell the people at home where they can find your tracks right now, where they can see you live. Um, you know, give them your website address, whatever it's going to take, so that people can continue to follow Blind Pony. Okay, it's blindpony.com. You know, blind pony like a pony that can't see. dot com. Go there. Um, tracks up on CD Baby early next week. We got a bunch of new stuff that we're going to put up there, and you can buy them there. And also, if you're interested in just kind of like hearing the tunes, we're up on SoundCloud, and we play a lot at this venue called the Cinema Bar on the west side, 3967 Sepulveda. We hope to see you there. And and you do have a uh, Facebook page, too, right? Facebook page, right, Blind Pony. Because everybody's on Facebook now. Yeah, 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 we are, too. We are, too. So and and Like O'Donoghue's Pub. Yeah, we hope to see you at a show. All right, well, Kent, I want to thank you for coming in. It was it was really a pleasure. Um, I know this took a little while to put this together, but I'm so glad you made it. Um, everybody that's listening, we're going to play a little more music now, probably uh, get some grub on, and we'll be back shortly with Kelly Debs performing live here at O'Donoghue's Pub. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>
I've got Dungeon Master's Guide I've got 12-sided die I've got Kitty Fry And Nightcrawler too Waiting there for me Yes, I do I do I've got posters on the wall It's freely I've got me to Chris Waiting there for me Yes, I do I do In the garage I feel safe No one cares about my ways In the garage where I belong No one hears me sing
probably Is it gonna be drugs and this party? I'm asking you Who called the cops on this party? Well, it might have been me Accidentally Ooh. Hey Whose beast is this? Well, tell him that it's out of the good shit Whose beast is this? I found some wine I'm gonna open it This house is cool You know they got the internet Dig all this free to bleed up It's full of continents Hey, all those real things Shit well, Don't just stand there Will someone help me clean up this mess? Dog out. Is that cool? Is there anything to drink besides water in this pool? You see, I deputize myself to turn this party up. Cause unlike you all, I believe anything's achievable. That's why I came here to turn this party from bumping. So unbelievable! Called myself a hero for killing unknown. Cars. 
communist Now I can walk into any old bar And find a fight without looking too hard But I never killed someone I don't know Just cause someone told me to And when I win the lottery Gonna buy the house
You are listening to O'Donohue'sPub.com. As soon as we get the... There we go. Uh, this is your host, DJ Rubik, and uh, now for the moment you've all been waiting for. We have here, live in the studio, Kelly Debs. Say hello, Kelly. Hello, how are you? Pretty good, how are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> we have applause. That is so awesome. <laughs> You know, one of these days we're going to have to get a, a, a track of applause, you know, for nights that we don't have bar flies. But, <laughs> but tonight we actually have people here in the studio that can applaud our, our talented and beautiful artist, Kelly Debs. Shucks. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to thank you all for, for hanging around. We, uh, we are a little behind schedule, but um, I don't know that we're really beheld to any kind of time frame, so... We're going to go ahead and, and move forward and let Kelly play what she wants to play for as long as she cares to play, because we're cool like that. Um, a, a quick story about Kelly. I met Kelly about, what, nine months ago, something like that. Um, I was at a show at uh, O'Brien's uh, Pub and Restaurant in Santa Monica, and I was there um, at the invitation of Zizix to see them perform and they had a, a bunch of great uh, I think that was a was that ladies night I believe that was ladies night they were with it the exception have, yeah I think it was that night with the exception of Zizix it was it was all um, female singer songwriters and sadly I got stuck having dinner out front and missed the the first two opening acts and Kelly was one of those so at the end of the show we, we were outside talking and oh, no, I, you're not gonna do it. I I I realized that uh, I was talking to a woman that had performed that night and I had not seen her perform and I felt really, really bad. And then it took me like seven months <laughs> <laughs> to to end up making it to one of her shows. But um, <laughs> an interesting story is that the same thing happened with Zizix and they're one of my favorite bands here in the, in the, LA, in the LA scene. So um, as a general rule, if I say that I like your sound or, or I, I like the idea of your sound because maybe I haven't even heard it yet and then it takes me months to finally hear you chances are you're going to become one of my favorite artists so <laughs> here we are um, so Kelly is is, is very uh, very talented uh, got a great sound I think you're going to really enjoy it um, so uh, let's let's just open it up with a song shall we let's do it and then and then we can do some talking and whatnot after that All so right. so so what are we starting with Kelly I think I'm gonna start with baby steps which is one of my newer songs, and uh, it'll be on my EP that I'm recording. You got a new one coming? Awesome. Hopefully. I'm, I'm working on some stuff. <laughs> I don't know when. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's hear some baby steps then. All right. Sounds good.
Lady wants now more monitor. Give the lady more I don't monitor. Have any monitor. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. Oh, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. That's a very beautiful song, Kelly. Thank you, Mark. Can Can you hear me in your headphones I can now? Hear you now? That's awesome. <laughs> You know, we've made you wait so long. Why don't you why don't you play another one and then we'll uh okay. we'll we'll rap about a few things. Alright, so this is um an older song and I forgot about playing it for a really long time. Um and I've brought it back and it's called the Conscience Song and it's about breaking up with my conscience.
about games anymore Don't wanna think about what is right or wrong I know you want the best for me But sometimes I want it to be That bar mic is really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that 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 is working really well, Sock. Good it's job. That is that? Oh, it's just my mic that's picking that up. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. There's actually a hundred people in here. <laughs> just to save it. There's there's a hundred people <laughs> worth of people here. That's for damn sure. Touche. And and two dogs. Yes. Um. So uh, so I did finally see you play live. Right. Um, not that long ago. You were you were playing at the uh, the Renaissance Hotel in Hollywood, and and I have to say that was that was actually a really cool show and a really cool. Um, can I call it a venue? Yeah, I know it's kind of a weird venue. It's, for you sure. know you you, yeah. you walk into the hotel, and it's like a, you know the big wide open lobby, and off to the right there's an, an open bar, and, and not and not open bar isn't like you can go up and get free booze because come on, there's no hotel in the world that's that dumb. <laughs> But but it's an open air kind of thing. Like you're right. you're, you're part of the the whole hotel lobby, and, and and it was really interesting because you know you you you're just there playing music and people are wandering right. in that that are that are visiting from out of town or staying there because I don't know they they broke up with their spouse. I don't know why they're staying at the hotel. But you've got this this really broad spectrum of people that are staying at this hotel. And uh, and they're just they're just hanging out there, and um, you know, some of them I guess were were trying to do their uh, their their remote work, it, but it at is, the same time, right. you know, grooving out to your to your songs. It is very and, strange. And uh, and uh, I, you know, you you got a lot of people that that were really into that, and and uh, and it, you know, it's I, I think that it's a it's a type of uh, I'm going to use the term venue again because I don't know what else to call it. Well, it technically um, is. I guess anywhere you yeah. play is a venue, it you is. know, even if it's an alley. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it's interesting because you're dealing with people that aren't necessarily local. So you're, you're reaching people that could be flying off to anywhere in the globe. Right. Knowing about Kelly Debs and having seen her perform live. And, um, and, and there was a guy there that bought like all your CDs. Ah, that guy. Woo. That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> it, he was awesome. That that guy was cool. Um, I I hope you brought me a copy tonight because that was supposed to be the night I was going to get I have my a copy. copy. You I did. Oh, awesome! Because you. you know when I when I go to shows um, and and I'm and I'm meeting artists, which wasn't the case with you, but in general, right. um, I usually try to hang back initially mm-hmm. because I want them to have the opportunity to reach out to their prospective new fans or existing fans before you know they they take time out to to talk to me and and whatever um you know i can wait they may they may or may not um so so i I decided to do that that night and and then this uh this little old man comes up and he's and and i didn't really hear the whole exchange but the next thing i know the guy's like walking off with like a stack of your cds and i didn't get one (laughs) but you know well well, I, i you know i knew that that you know we'd have that opportunity again and um and I'm glad that I'm getting that CD tonight. Um, ha- have you decided what you're going to inscribe on it yet? I don't think that the radio audience wants to hear that. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh. I don't even know what that you know, means. I don't even know what that means. Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't know what that means either. But, but, I, but I think I'm. I'm looking forward to finding out. Um, on that note. <laughs> yeah. So you. you would you like to play another song, Kelly, Perhaps, by for so. chance? <laughs> what do we got up next? Moment I am floating Could have lost my keys 
is cause I didn't need to get into anything Should've run a time machine so I could be with you through everything Would've waited a lifetime for you Happy tears are telling me what I was missing Everything I love about you and all those Hollywood kisses You're warm to me on a cold, cold night And it's times like these when I'm mine Run away with you if you dared me to Garden tall so I could be your even you could be my Adam Would I got lost at sea if I'd have known you were right there to rescue me Should have built a throne for a king and queen Cause you see that's what it's meant to be Would have waited a lifetime for you But here you are to me and these happy tears are telling me what I was missing everything I love about you and all those Hollywood kisses you're warm to me on a cold cold night and it times like these when I'm mine run away with you if you dare me For those of you that don't know, you are listening to odonahughespub.com, and uh, more directly, you are listening to the talented Kelly Debs. <laughs> it's okay, you can... Giggly you Kelly can, Debs. <laughs> you can bask in the moment. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kelly, um, you, you have a great sound. Um, who's influenced you? What's, uh, who's, who's brought you to where you are today? that question <laughs> no you, you knew it was coming you know what? i love the interview with kent earlier because he kind of said it and it's strange because i i when i say my influences they're all over the place and it's like but so how does that describe you it's so tough because it is you could be influenced by so many things but my story is pretty much that i grew up um singing musical theater and i started off in a little five girl group called the showbiz kids when i was like 10 years old and we did you know show tunes five-part harmony like barbershop type stuff and so I really grew up singing with other people doing a lot of harmonies you know and, and musical theater definitely gave me that belty voice um, and and I grew up on country music I grew up singing with a lot of country female artists that had big powerful voices and kind of fell in love with that um, and then I 
took a couple years off in college and started playing guitar at that point. And when I started writing, it was sort of a whole different sound than that stuff. But I mean, I've always grown up listening to to female artists like Jewel. I love Sarah Bareilles. I love um, anything with a really great melody and that's kind of vocally driven is something that I've always been drawn to. So, but that could even be bands. Like I, one of my favorite bands is Fight Star, and they're a, an English band that I discovered when I lived in London. And they're super melodic, and they're really hard sometimes, you know, hard rock. But they have these great melodies, and that's kind of what drives me, I think, in anything that I listen to. Awesome. Y- you'll have to uh, <laughs> you have to help me discover this Fight Star. I'm intrigued. Yeah, I well, I love Fight Star. Seriously. Uh, I, I think they're a great band, and I've never met anyone in the U.S. that's heard of them, so you're welcome. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you know, we we uh, we here at O'Donohue'sPub.com, um, <laughs> we, uh, we 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 try to specialize in finding the music that people haven't heard, right? Or um, or or haven't heard the tracks that we play from particular artists, right? To okay. to kind of help expand their their musical knowledge and experience. Um, of course, having said that, we we played a lot of. Uh, a lot of mainstream songs earlier today, um, you know, between the interviews and everything. But, um, but yeah, that, that's awesome. We'll, we'll, you'll have to you have to help me discover them, and and, oh, well, uh, sure. and maybe we can throw some of them up here on the show. Okay, cool. Sweet. You, All right. You just help some some uh, some Londoners out. You're welcome, Five Star. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they're listening. <laughs> they are probably as we speak. Awesome. We're BFFs. Well, actually, it's uh, so it's like morning <laughs> in in London right now, so maybe they're listening to us, you know, while they're on the it's wishful on thinking, the Mark. on the train, <laughs> on the you know they have double decker buses there, I think. So, I, I don't know if that helps any. You think it helps? I, I don't know that, that explains a damn thing. <laughs> 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 All right, well, uh, what do we got next, Kelly? All right, I'm gonna play War, which is um, another one that will be on my upcoming EP. Sweet. My ep- I'm just kidding. (laughs) Anyway, this is how it goes. shadows, chasing shadows of the life we used to lead. Chasing shadows, chasing shadows, and I'm running myself round a racket. I can't look at you I can't look 
look at you anymore Cause when I do it's not like before I don't know how we came to this Don't know how we started this I'm the only one who's losing sleep at night. I'll give up this fight. Give up this fight. I love that song. Thanks. You're welcome. Wow. <laughs> Suddenly I'm giddy like a squirrel girl. What the, what's going on here? I don't know, but I'll I'm, take it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> someone's going to pull my man card shortly after all of this. Like I, I had one, one. Like I had one in the first place. I know. Sigh. Um, so, so Kelly. Yes. Um, you've, actually, you've actually been following O'Donohue's Pub for a while. We're going to yes. turn this around for oh, a moment. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, and, a, and an interesting thing that, that, that's happened here with the pub is that um, uh, Sock and I have been, we've been doing this almost a year now. And, uh, and Sock is, uh, Sock's our, our engineer and uh, proprietor extraordinaire. And uh, the oddly man enough. behind the curtain that makes he, it all he's, happen. Yeah, he's like, he's like the Wizard of Oz. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what he wanted to be described as this evening too, uh, but but my role has been to uh, to kind of get out there and 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 find local acts right. and things like that. Um, and you know that we've done a number of, of shows that we called you know like locals only right. or you know local shows. But uh, it recently occurred to me that almost none of the people that we are promoting as locals are actually from even California. Like you're from you're from Florida. Exactly. Um, obviously, by by whatever means, you ended up here in LA to uh, to pr- to pursue your 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 musical craft. Yes. Um, so we've uh, we've recently had to kind of retool our name our our, uh, our our show ideas to where we're talking about independent artists over locals because you know I think I think there's like one band that I've played that that is actually all local. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, you get. I mean, like you've all moved, moved here. Um, you know, we had um, we had Simon Braun, Brown on a few weeks ago, and uh, and he's from Illinois, and but again came here, has spent uh, you know quite a time, quite a bit of time here, kind of becoming a native in a way. Right. Um, I don't know how long you've been here, but it's it's been a, a fair couple amount. Years, of, yeah, couple years, yeah. Couple years, yeah. So, gosh, so you, I can't even believe you're, it. You're acclimating, <laughs> I guess. Uh, you Hopefully do very well. <laughs> I, I hear you do a wicked Valley Girl um, oh, impersonation. No. Impersonation. Are you going to make me do that? Uh, I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do, darling. Okay, this is for Carmen. If Carmen's listening, you're a miaza. Like, <laughs> <laughs> She's going to love me forever. Oh, Carmen. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so you're, from, you're from Florida. Yes. Um, where in Florida? Tampa, again? Florida. Tampa. Yeah, that place. So, um, so as a, as a native Floridian, uh-huh. um, you, you, I'm sure you're aware that, uh, that the Miami Heat won the uh, NBA championship last night. Yeah, I do know that. How do you feel about that? I saw it on Yahoo. <laughs> I think that I'm explains. Kidding. You know what's the funniest <laughs> thing ever? And I feel people are going to hate me right now. Basketball is the one sport that I don't watch. And so I know it's so wrong so, of me. So, but so how, do, how do you enjoy um, badminton? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good point. Good point. Point taken. Point taken. You did get a Florida. What? I did. From the crowd. Oh Woot. goodness. Well, no. The thing is, I, I I just not a big basketball person. I was like, go Miami, <laughs> and that was about as much that that got out of me. But you know, good for them. 
I could, I'm sticking my foot in my mouth again, I think. I could tell you that um, <laughs> you should not audition to be a cheerleader. No, I shouldn't. For the Miami <laughs> right, Heat. Right, right, probably no, not. You should not do that. <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, but but on behalf of, of the Los Angeles area, yes. in fact, let's call it the greater Los Angeles yes. area, Okay. Um, we're glad that, that you decided to make the move out here. And, Thank you. And you've, you've come to join us in uh, the, uh, the entertainment capital. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, which I'm which which is only going to last until Bollywood, you know, undercuts us enough, and then Bollywood, you know they'll take us over. Entertain us, right? Right. <laughs> um, apparently, the barflies are getting restless yeah. and would like to hear another song. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think I can handle it. I, I'm glad because otherwise we might have a riot. <laughs> <laughs> of all the hundred people in here, <laughs> or a mosh pit. Let, it, hey, it, how about you guys mosh right now? That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? To this song. You, you get to play. Ready? You get to play an L7 cover. <laughs> no, I'm gonna play a Kelly Dub song, and you're gonna mosh. <laughs> All right. Mark, mosh pit. Okay, this is probably the the most realistic for moshing. Are you ready? I hope they get this on camera. I'm not kidding around. Do I have to get it for mosh? No. Ready? <laughs> if they don't look, if they don't do it, I'm gonna look like a jackass.
Um, you know, for our uh, our longtime listeners here at O'Donohue'sPub.com, you, you, you always got to like push that. I, otherwise, I, I, I'm pe- it. otherwise, like a week a week goes by and people are like, "How do I get back to that show that I just watched?" Um, but for our longtime listeners, um, that is the uh, the Kelly Deb song that they would recognize "Left So Easily." It is. It's like the only track you had for like up until tonight. That months. is the only track I've ever had. So. <laughs> So uh, I'm sure that our, our listeners are glad to hear that live and uh, and, and, and feel acoustic. like part of something. Live and acoustic yeah. and and with mosh pitting. And mosh pitting. That was priceless for me. You know, you know that <laughs> mosh pit didn't just have, uh, you know, myself and Chinchilla. It also had Tina and Riley. There were actually oh, two dogs Very in that true. mosh pit, which you might not have been able to see on camera. So uh, that was actually a, uh, a, a four animal mosh pit right there. <laughs> Yeah, th- this is the greatest banter between songs we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually rendering me speechless for once in my life, like on a regular basis. Wow, I, I how did I? I don't know how I do that. I know. For those of you who know me, they're like shocked by it. But what, what you you want to say something, Sock? You're you're gonna say something, but you gotta you gotta like turn on that mic or whatever. You think I know how to do that? You you're like our engineer or something, so you'd think that you like, could. There you go. I yeah, think like I hear that you. That one right there. There we go. I just wanted to say I think uh, you're just enjoying it because for once the artist isn't talking shit about you <laughs> and ripping you down. You know that's only trail of beer cans. <laughs> for, for the record, he is the only person that comes in here and talks a bunch of smack about me. He made you drink PBR. You know what? <laughs> a, a group of like 35 people made me drink PBR. <laughs> it wasn't just uh, Tony. No way. There were a lot of people here that night. Do, do I have to go through all the shenanigans that happened that night? There were no shenanigans. There were so many there shenanigans. Was just good music like tonight. Oh, God. There were so many don't shenanigans. You, but but you know what? Make you like me. But you know what? Those shenanigans have nothing do, to do with Kelly Debs, and she is the reason we're here tonight. So we can discuss those on a different, uh, a different oh, evening. Like. So, so, Kelly. Yeah. Um, we've apparently. <laughs> We've apparently like said a bunch of stuff and and gone off tangent here. Uh, would you would you like to play another song? Get get us get us back into uh, into our means, groove. By all means. You you all rule. Right, so this is a brand new song, and uh, I wrote it because um, it sort of just talks about how sometimes things start really sweet in a relationship and think they're super solid but you don't always build the right foundation and they can crumble pretty easily so it's called gingerbread house Oh 
So, so Kelly, is it true that if you live in a gingerbread house, you'll never go hungry? Um, speechless again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I wish you know, I could be wittier on that stuff. But uh, I, don't, I got nothing for you, Mark. I, I, I'm yeah. sorry that <laughs> that there's there's something about That's me that, for not that does this. Me. <laughs> for the record, we tried to feed you, but you're like, oh, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not it's, like, it's like you're a gremlin. It's I, after midnight or I something. It's spaghetti like right before I sing. Because if anybody sings, they would understand. F- fair that. enough. I shouldn't have gotten into this. I opened I, up that can of worms, though. Hey, you know. <laughs> and and we like what wriggled out. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> uh, so, so, Kelly. Um, for, can I have another plate, please? <laughs> or you can't have any plate? pudding until you beat yeah, your meat. First plate, please. <laughs> So, so Kelly, um, I'm certain that uh, the, the people listening at home have a very important question on their mind, and that is, um, how can they get a hold of your first EP? Okay. My first EP is kind of everywhere. Um, you can get it on iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby. CD Baby is the best one because it's you know, directed towards artists. So for me, that would be great. <laughs> but I understand iTunes and that stuff's very accessible, so you can are, find are, it there. Are all of those linked from your Facebook page, or? Where? Um, yeah, you can kind of get to if you honestly, if you just Google Kelly Debs, K E L L I D E B B S, all my stuff pops up. I'm kind of lucky because there's I, not I d- another Kelly Debs. Uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> that I know and, of. <laughs> and if they are, if there is, I, I can't imagine it's spelled the same way. Right. So. Exactly. So it's pretty simple. You can find me easily on there. Yeah, I hear if Facebook, you Facebook anything. I hear if you Google DJ Rubik, you find some other dude on on MySpace, but it doesn't count if you're only on MySpace. Yeah. So, so I win. Yay. <laughs> yeah. That was a shameless plug for myself and I don't even have anything to sell. <laughs> All right, Kelly. Um you you got some more in you? You want to I do. I got a couple more in me. That's sure. that's good. Okay. So, what do we got next? All right. So, this one's home. I started writing this when I lived in London, um, which was like 2007, 2008. I moved over there for school and uh, lived there for a couple years. And, in the, and, and I'm always kind of interested in this feeling of home because, you know, you can have so many versions of it sometimes. And, um, and I'm always intrigued. Well, I move, I've moved a lot. Well, I, so it, it kind of throws me for a loop every time. And I'm like, is this my home or is that my home? Which one's my home, you know? So I'm constantly trying to kind of figure it out just emotionally and, and get myself into a good routine somewhere and feel like myself wherever I am. So that's kind of the concept of this song is figuring out where home actually is to you. And it goes like this. <laughs>
good things, they just take some time. Do the things that make you whole, but you sometimes just feel so small. And you know that good things, they just take some time. Cause I know there's something here for me And I know these walls, they might hold my things They don't hold my dreams And I wanna Did you, did you hear that? You, you've got a fan that, that I think is proposing marriage. Out of those, out of those hundred people, one of them. One of them. Hope, <laughs> hopefully he's good looking. <laughs> Let's hope so. And male. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with the, the alternative. Uh, so you, you, of course, are listening to O'Donohue'sPub.com. We have the talented Kelly Debs here with us tonight. And uh, I don't know. How's it going, Kelly? It's going great. Um, okay, I have an I have an interesting um, message from uh, from from one of our, our our viewers right now, and uh, <laughs> the the message disappeared here, but but I think I can paraphrase it correctly. <laughs> he, he says that you are like a uh, a Taylor Swift with grown up lyrics, talented. <laughs> a talented Taylor Swift with gro- grown up lyrics. I feel like no matter what I say right now, I'm gonna be. <laughs> In some trouble, so that's 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 very. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> you know what? I think I, you just have. I, I think you have a new fan. I actually like Taylor Swift, and you guys can <laughs> chastise me all night long. But I get her songs stuck in my head all the time. Even okay. See, this I, is why I didn't want to go down this road because I you know started. What? Let there, me, I started to have a good point, but it's slowly going. Let me let me rescue you, Kelly. Because that's my job here. All right. Um, Taylor Swift makes me wish that I was 10 years younger and liked country music. <laughs> so so there, there is my shameful admission right. to cover whatever it was you were just talking about that no one remembers anymore. Okay. Although this is recorded and they Thank can watch you. it at I any know, time. I know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, let's so. see. We've, we've covered where to find your music. Yeah. Um, we've gotten a little bit of your background, your influences. Um do you have any performances coming up? Can our can our can our viewers that are uh, here in the greater Los Angeles area see you perform live shortly? They can. I'm playing at Universal Bar and Grill on the 25th, so that's right around the corner. Um, what day of the week is that? It's Monday night, actually. This coming Monday. Oh, that's true. <laughs> today's the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's yep. it is Monday. And uh, um, I'm playing, I think, at 9:30, and then I have a big show which I haven't announced yet, but it's so, on the so 19th. So this is this is an exclusive here this at the pub. This is, and I'm still not allowed to announce it yet. But I'm going to tell you to look out for something on July 19th, which is also my 30th birthday. So it's going to be a really fun night, and it's All in right. LA. Um, and so mark the date on your calendar. Don't make any other plans, mm-hmm. or else. <laughs> if if I do have other plans, they're canceled. <laughs> okay, good. That's what I wanted to hear. Unless Taylor Swift's coming to visit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if Taylor's then I'll just, in town, can I bring I her around? Can I, I just I bring her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that wouldn't be awkward. <laughs> Sigh. 
the things I do to for, for our guests. Yeah, you're such a dreamboat. <laughs> I'm getting getting all kind of warm and fuzzy inside right now. All right. You got you got another <laughs> song to, to rescue me. I do. I think uh, I'm gonna. I think this will be uh, the. This is going to be the this song. Is the song that, okay, that. well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to O'Donohue'sPub.com, and you are about to hear the final song being performed tonight by the beautiful and talented Kelly Debs. So eat it up while you can, folks. It's almost over. <laughs> this is called Love. Um, this is going to be on my upcoming EP as well. And thank you guys so much. It's been fun. Unlike the sky Help me catch a star You give me something right Solidify, solidify It all magic changed me Made me feel like me Now I'm trying You know, 
um, Sock forgot to turn on the mic while we were in the midst of our main um, applauding. So hopefully the people at home heard that we loved that song. You, you feel free to say something. We, you know, we, we're, yeah, there we go. Yay! <sighs> you know, I love how like the people here just love to shut up. <laughs> Jeez. You know, Kelly, you, you're like the only person that's been nice to me tonight, I think. <laughs> I appreciate that. I really do. That's I that's awesome. I practice these things. She had to practice. It's, yeah, it's sad that she had to practice. <laughs> How can I tolerate Sigh. this guy for like four hours? <laughs> you know, you know, she's had to like, she's been in touch with me for like a for like Whoa. weeks now. In touch. I didn't say she touched me. Woo! Where are you guys coming up with this stuff? Oh, oh, Kelly. So, Kelly. Yes. Um, I want to say that that was a very beautiful set you played for us. Thank you. We have been incredibly honored to have you join us tonight. Encore! I've had a lot of fun. It's been really cool. I'm glad that, that you made <laughs> it out and that you you've come and played for us and Encore! and that you've got. You, Thank you for having me. You you have you have you have a um a demand for an encore. Oh goodness. You got you got. Encore! And don't. And, and don't act like you don't know how to encore, because I saw you do it the last time you played. Uh, what are you talking about? You like totally walked off that no semi stage thing at the at things. the lounge there in the, <laughs> in the lobby of the hotel, and then you came back and although you came back and played left so easily, <laughs> which you've already played tonight, but very true. So now I got to come up with a different you get, encore song. Do you, We're also about bonus. You know, you can you could play a cover or something if that's uh, like a standby to go to. Well, what do you want, a cover or, or a Kelly Dibbs? Which I want. Prefer? I want you to play what is in your heart. In my heart. All right. Your favorite. Uh, song why don't I play time. Sad Eyes? Because I, I think, or that's on my EP, and a lot of people back home know it, and they haven't heard it in a very long time. So if there are people listening, I would love to play Sad Eyes. Sounds like a fabulous choice. <laughs> All right.
Kelly? Yes. You have given us quite a treat this evening. Oh, well, anytime. I had a blast tonight. It was fun. I think we'll have you back. Okay. Someday. All right. But don't be surprised if we have a few other artists play between now you and then. You mean I'm not going to be here every week? Um, <laughs> how do I put this judiciously? <laughs> Probably not. Mark, hey, it's totally cool. I understand. But no, you... Absence I, makes the heart grow fonder. Exactly. Even though we see a lot of each other <laughs> these days now. <laughs> Very true. So, um, so Kelly, I want to thank you for coming and playing here on the show. You're very um, welcome. You know, we are odonahusepub.com, for those of you that are still listening. And, uh, and we really appreciate you coming out. We want to also uh, send out a big thanks to Kent Kleinman of Blind Pony for coming in and, and interviewing with us tonight. Woo, Kent! Yeah! I think he's still in the building somewhere. And, uh, and, uh, and for those of you that did tune in tonight, we definitely want to thank you. Um, please stay tuned to our, our uh, Facebook page. That is uh, facebook.com slash O'Donohue's Pub. You also find a link to it on the very page that you are watching this broadcast from. And uh, here shortly in the next couple of days, we'll announce what next Friday's theme or show will be. Yeah, we, uh, we, we don't ad- plan that far in advance. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you, or, or actually you'll get to see us next Friday here. So again, Woo! big thanks to the talented Kelly Debs, the talented Kent Kleinman. I am your host, DJ Rubik. This is with us, of course, as always, DJ Sock, Chinchilla. Um, hey, Sock, let's... Uh, <coughs> Let's give the listeners at home a little something extra. How about you give them some Oingo Boingo to play out? I can music. do that. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. And uh, here's some bonus music.
Well, I just can't go on with this song in my head. The words come out wrong when you're sick in your bed. I'll be the punchline to my own joke when I'm dead. Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith. And I was stabbed 19 times, 13 times, yeah, three times. Whichever story you choose is just fine as long as I'm remembered with your last drink of wine. Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith. I want to die like a samurai I want to die like a samurai And I want to die, want to die, want to die <clears throat> Ho, ho, ho Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith, Elliot Smith.
My face is finally dry From the weight of my tears My dreams were interrupted by The sum of my fears So please send me some love I will keep waiting Stop on by I keep praying Cause the weight is breaking my shoulders I find myself calling on you You calling on you I keep calling on you You calling on you Yes, I have been surrounded by Broken opportunities Every failure leaves me mystified And down on my knees So please send me some love I will keep waiting Stop, I won't fly. I keep praying Cause the weight is breaking my shoulders Please strengthen my spine My faith is running Only your love was meant to do I'm swimming upstream Oh, and the weight is killing me I keep calling on you And unmistakable love Is something that I can hold on to Keep shining on me Cause I still believe Myself calling on you, calling on you. I keep calling on you, you calling on you. I keep calling on you. I'm calling on you, Lord. I keep on calling on you.
Is enough, they gotta kill me to sit me. False vision show these niggas ain't getting it. A 10 year run, then they caught in the system. Niggas snitching, profit is the underhand. Lames hate to see you check it and they struggling. Real talk, keep your enemies close. Show these niggas don't give a fuck, they'll kill you for jokes of what it's worth. Born to die, blessed for this dirt. But in the meanwhile, grind hard, papers first. Ill and out, just feeling the life. Any day could be my time, cause I'm a child of the night. Raw type shitty mood and my mental ain't right Lost in my own mind, I was born for this fight I got the juice, Look, I, ain't I shit. got the juice I ain't never gonna be shit And you less of a man than me, so I soon as I decide juice. that you ain't gonna I be shit I got the shit. juice Damn. I got so the big. juice, I got the juice Remember that, motherfucker Cause I'm the one y'all need to be worried about I got the juice, I got the juice I'm back at it, nigga known for the truth The hood is a war zone, real nigga salute You can catch me in fatigues out here sipping the deuce Straight grinding, lames try to hate on my climate Block hotter than Sahara with no local consignment Really, fuck these niggas, Joe, they know how to find me Low key, real deep, and my hustle's a diamond Feel this flow, VVS, but I still ain't shining Too in it, twisted off these bottles of riches Seeing the world through this rose and the future ain't pretty I'ma keep it on the level, ain't no love in my city Death squad, life hard when you live in the windy Shit tragic, young bodies in plastic But niggas love the block and the hustle is they passion Fuck it, I guess they went out for the money Ain't no rules to this game, it's a green face dummy I got the juice, I got the juice Look, I ain't shit, I ain't never gonna be shit And you less of a juice. man than me, so soon as I, I decide that you ain't gonna be shit Damn. I got the juice, so I got beat. the juice You remember that, motherfucker Cause I'm I the got one the juice. you worried about I got the juice now as my life grow older, shit can change These bitches ain't the same and your friends turn lame That's just facts from a real nigga lost in these cracks Praying that hip-hop come back resurrected in black Too many counterfeit MCs and DL niggas Swear they body concrete plus they well-known dealers Bullshit industry pawns just here to thrill ya I'm a real hood nigga and you ain't looking familiar Deep thoughts, I'ma spit them Joe no matter the cost We gon' hustle, we gon' grind till these wheels fall off Real rap Chew it up and swallow it black Kinda rocky in your belly like a heavyweight match Deal with it, ill shine, we don't care for your feelings No remorse, blood terms, and we down for the business Certified in these streets, and the Logan is my witness Some say life about money, respect is a killer I got the juice, I got the juice Yeah, yeah I got the juice, I got the juice Yeah, yeah I got the juice, I got the juice yeah, I got the juice, I got the juice Yeah, yeah Real deep When you said that last time, I was kinda tripping, right? But now, 